There are a lot of ideas and patterns not being used. I think this time we got a very good team together. The people be able to think in different ways. And they picked up an idea, realized the benefits of it, and put it into production. That idea was based upon this, a steel bolt. It looks ordinary enough, but the design of this bolt lay at the center of a 125 million pound project at Rover in the 1980s to develop a new engine which would see the company into the next millennium. The huge cost of development meant for the designers working on the project that the new engine family was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to contribute to new engine design. Conventional car engines, such as Rover's earlier N-series or A-series, are constructed using separate sets of bolts on the top and the bottom of the engine block. This relies on the rigidity of the block to contain combustion forces. It also risks distortion of the cylinder bore. This distortion was of special concern to Rover because unlike its earlier cast iron engines, it wanted the new K-series to be built around a lighter aluminium block. One of the problems you see you've got with aluminium is it's very good in compression, but not as good in tension. And also, we would like to avoid distortion of the aluminium block and the liners because that could lead to oil consumption high oil consumption, which we don't want. Bolts are good at carrying tension. Steel is good at carrying tension. Aluminium is very light, but it's much less good, less efficient in tension. So if it could build up a structure or component like layers, sandwich structure, easy, flat surface to manufacture, you put them all together, minimum risk of any oil leak, and if you then can go with one bolt from the top to the bottom, you've got whole package under compression, instead of having one set of bolts from the top and one set of bolts from the bottom. That's where we start getting that idea. Let's get on with it. This is unique. A total of 10 long bolts hold the layers of engine tightly together. These help to maintain the shape of the cylinder bore. The idea was not new but Rover was the first company to manufacture a car engine of this type. Their success in making the idea work was revolutionary. The development of the new engine took six years. As the design evolved, it became clear that the long bolts could not be included without rethinking the shape of the whole engine. We ran the bolts down the outside of the cylinder block um, on the basis that they would function equally well there. They didn't need to be internal to the engine. Um, and we would save weight on the cylinder block itself. Unfortunately, there were disadvantages with that route. The entry and exit points of the bolt, where they went back into the crankcase and exited from the head, were very difficult to keep oil tight. Um, and as such, we abandoned that idea. What we did instead was to extend areas of the cylinder block around the outside of the bolts so that the bolts sat in a cast-in tunnel. That retained some of the advantages in that we didn't have to machine very long holes for the bolts to go through, which would be a lengthy and expensive process, um, but still kept the bolts functioning as we would wish. There were spin-off benefits. Um, the tunnels gave us relatively large diameter, or large area, they're actually square, large area communication passages between the crack case itself and the cylinder head. And we decided that we could use these as passages for engine breathing, and also it allowed us to provide a much better oil drainage system from the cylinder head back to the sun. It wasn't something we had envisaged at the beginning. Um, the need to enclose the bolts to ensure oil tightness gave us this opportunity, which, when we'd investigated it fully, was, it was a significantly greater benefit 
than we would have originally obtained by running the bolts externally. The plan to use the bolts was suddenly offering elegant solutions. But Rover still had to make sure that the engine would be mechanically stable. We got a lighter block, but we also got uh, a block which was less stiff than would otherwise have been the case. So it was very important that we made sure that the block was still able to carry those loads which arose from other forces than the combustion forces. In a, in a vehicle, the whole engine uh, beams is the name we apply. What it means is that the engine and gearbox assembly effectively bends as the forces arising in both within the engine and from the, the suspension are applied to it. Rover used computer analysis to assess the performance of the new design. Here, a vertical slice shows the results of a simulation of the loads and stresses which a running engine would have to bear. Yellow areas are very lowly stressed, while the red indicates some areas which are tensile, but acceptably so. A different simulation helped Rover to minimize noise. This is an exaggerated representation of the vibration of the engine. The different colors here indicate the amount of displacement in the system. Computer analysis prompted some modifications to the design, but there were still many details to be worked out. One of the major areas where the, the long bolt had an effect was in the design of the cylinder head gasket. Because we had gone for the most flexible bolt that we could possibly achieve, the clamping loads that we had were rather lower than is the case in conventional engines. That meant that the cylinder head joint had less load on it than would normally be the case. Our original design scheme showed very simple rings sealing the combustion forces and the liquid sealing for the oil and water passing through the cylinder head joint being achieved by a liquid gasket which required no load at all and which would solidify anaerobically once the cylinder head was, was bolted down. That scheme ran into some problems which forced us into using a different concept. What we decided to use was a new type of cylinder head gasket which had only recently become available which sealed all the liquid using elastomeric beads printed onto the gasket. And these beads required a very much lower load than is the case for normal gaskets. This allowed us to take the load which the bolts gave us and concentrate the vast majority of it on the cylinder sealing rings, which is where we needed it. The first engines were launched in 1989 and 1990. But why could Rover make a long bolt engine when no one had succeeded before? It has indeed been the, the engine designer purist's dream, if you like, for many years. The thing which has, has made it possible for K-series are developments in the materials front. The bolt itself is made out of a boron steel with a very, very closely controlled yield strength. Without that closely controlled yield strength, we would not be able to maintain the load applied by the bolts within the close limits that we need. And without those close limits, the flexibility, the loads applied on the engine would be non-uniform, inconsistent, and would cause us problems throughout the structure. The forces which the bolts apply to the engine sandwich have to be precise. The engine could certainly be made, but careful design thought also had to be given to keeping the compression force consistent in mass manufacture. To achieve this, Rover uses a technique called the snug torque and turn tightening process. Bolts are dropped into their locations to be tightened to a relatively low torque. This is called the snug torque. They are then given a further full turn. By applying the snug torque, We've got all the components in contact, the bolt head in contact with the seating face on the cylinder head, and from then on we know that we're stretching the bolt. So we stretch it by one thread pitch by giving one turn. 
that's where we come to a rather unusual area of this bolt performance in that that tightening will have taken the bolt near to yield. It's more usual for cylinder head bolts to tighten them straight into yield. But with this very long bolt and the aluminium engine, what we have done is taken it near to yield and then the first time the engine warmed up, the different expansion of the aluminium and the bolt stretches the bolt by bring nearly another millimetre and that's what takes it into yield. The clever design makes sure that the clamping load is consistent. Perhaps surprisingly, the bolts themselves are not made by Rover, but by a specialist manufacturer in Germany. Rover do, however, detail the bolt specifications very tightly. The conical taper is designed to ease assembly to guide the mail thread into its mating components. In the case of the other end, the head end, the radius underhead is absolutely critical. It's the main stress raiser for this area of the bolt. If that's not right, there is a risk of bolt failure. If the head is off square, as the manufacturing says to some degree it must be, then a bending load is placed across that change of section. Therefore, we must have a suitable distributor of stress around that corner to ensure that we don't get failures. The success of the K-series engine can be put down to new materials technology which made the long bolt possible. But success was also the product of a willingness to rethink accepted engine design. But after all that design effort, why does Rover not make the bolts itself? Rover don't make bolts themselves in general because it's not cost effective for us to do so. Rover particularly don't make difficult bolts and that is a difficult bolt.